Ladies and gentlemen, the first man to build 21 inch biceps, drug free. My friends, <laughs> you know, let me tell you something, my friends. Because anybody, as I said a number of times, that is into bodybuilding, I'm into them. It's my life. From the day I was 10, I started training. It's the foundation of everything I live for. And you know, I'm, I'm an old man, let's face it. But I grew, my friends, I grew into my age. I didn't get to this stage in life sitting around watching the grass grow. And all I want to do is give you back some of the information that I have encountered in so many years. Now, one thing I want to say, not one, but uh, it's so sad. And I want to tell you something, my friends. When the bell, when my hair, my law, my phone ring, <coughs> I freeze. Because I want to say what one of my bodybuilding friends that I love so have died. Which one? And it's always someone. Now, I just saw on the video about Harold Poole. Beautiful young man. I had gotten banged up. I was working for Joe Weider in the shipping department. When I got banged up in the early stages of my career on a motorcycle. And I couldn't train anymore. I mean, I could train, but competition was out of the question. Had pins and needles and shafts and everything. My whole ankle, the whole right arm, leg was practically destroyed. And then I heard, I saw what I think of Harold Poole. Beautiful, beautiful, young, daring man. And the only thing, he had a real bad stuttering problem. And that made him very, very aggressive. Good looking, terrific body, but it made him very aggressive. He was a very aggressive guy in his encounters because of that. But he was tremendous. I mean, I mean, all of us worked in the warehouse. I was the supervisor, we had five guys. Me and four other guys working in the warehouse getting all the equipment out that was ordered for Joe Weider, the father bodybuilder, Joe Weider. And we all worked there. So of course I was there first and Harold came. And Harold had everybody intimidated. Because Harold was like, Harold Poole, you know, strong and good looking and tremendous, you know. So, uh, it, it, it's funny how, now, being I'm the oldest guy, much older than these guys, and uh, I was running the show. And now uh, Harold had everybody intimidated me. Harold said, hey, do that, do that, do that, and they do it, because they were, like, intimidated by Harold. And that's what kept Harold going, that intimidation people had of him because of his size and his daring, and he was smothering that because of a stuttering problem. So, when I, uh, I'll never forget it. It's one of the, 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 if I lived a thousand, I would forget it. Now, Harold sort of resent because they all looked up to me. I'm the oldest guy, you know. I, so Harold sort of resented that. Harold felt in his mind, if he could subdue me, if he can make me, uh, subject to him and intimidated by him. He ruled the whole shipping department. So, I mean, I can feel it. Because, you know, I have that kind of feeling. I'm, I'm always digging and looking and trying to find out where people are coming from. So, I mean, I didn't want to tangle with him because, I mean, he's a tough, big guy. So, he was up on the ramp. They bring the, the, the equipment in from the outside, bring it into the, into the warehouse, we pack it up, we pack it, set it out. So Harold's up on the ramp. And Harold said, hey, Leroy, 
I said, what? Move that box over there when I come down there. I said, what do you mean move the box over there when you come down? He said, move the box before I come down there and smack the shit out of you. I said, oh, oh, to myself. I said, I don't want to fight this guy. You know, I said, oh, boy, here we go. I don't want to fight him. So I said, well, I have no choice. So he comes running down the ramp, and I just put my fist straight out, and he ran right into my fist, bust his nose all open. Oh, God, oh, my nose, you know. He was just struggling, and, 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 and I, I was, like, shocked because I, I, I just put my fist straight out, I mean, he was coming after me. I just put my fist out, you know, <laughs> like a, a reflex action. But he ran right into it. Bust his nose all up. You know? And he was just, oh, I had to call emergency and all that. And I'm looking in astonishment. And uh, uh, I said to myself, I thought we leave because I was thinking of trussling in there with Harold Poole, which I didn't want to do. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and tell you, oh, I want to fight Harold. I don't want to fight him. But I knew I had to. I knew everybody else was intimidated. They weren't about to resist Harold. You know? So Harold said, do something, didn't it? But I couldn't allow that. I mean, if he subject me, then she said, I couldn't. I mean, we'd have to roll on that. So in any case, Harold was completely subdued. After he went to the hospital and they fixed him up, fixed his nose, it wasn't really broken, it was bent. And, you know, Bill bent out of shape, but it wasn't broken completely. And Harold came back, he was so humble to me. I don't think Harold realized what happened. He was so busy running down the ramp to intimidate me, he ran right to my fist. And so, <clears throat> we got along great. He was... Um, just a wonderful guy. He trained well, had a heart of, uh, of gold, but the stuttering got to him psychologically. When they the, the wrestling came up and they all got excited about Harold and they wanted to promote Harold, but Harold's ego would not allow him to succumb to his stuttering. And he couldn't promote himself because wrestling was a, it's a scam, you know. That is not a really uh, a contest; it's a scam. And the whole idea is promote yourself. And Harold had the body and everything, but he wouldn't do it, so he didn't do well in that. But I haven't spoken to Harold in so many years. I was hurt to realize that he had died, and I understand he was just seventy-one years old. And, and it, it breaks my heart. I mean, uh, he was in the early steroid days, you know, before. Today is ridiculous, but they have today. But in those days, he was in the early steroid days, and he was very impressive. Very nice guy. The only thing held him back from really being a bigger guy than he is or was is because of his stuttering. Now, a lot of you young fellows, they never even heard of these guys. Maybe looking and puzzled. Well, let me tell you, my friends, this is all the evolution of bodybuilding. This is all the growth of bodybuilding. And to now, to the point now, I must tell you, and I hate to say it, I dismiss these guys now. They're so freaky, so screwed up with so many drugs. I, I, I can't relate to it anymore. You see, it's because it's destructive. I'm going to tell you about that a little video, but I'm just telling you about Harold, beautiful human being, I miss him so, and may I haven't spoken to Harold maybe in six, seven, no, it was about four years ago I spoke to Harold last, but you know, when you have so many bodybuilding friends, when you talk to them, treat them every day, you be on the ball all the time, but we have a fraternity, we have a fraternity, it's never, you you may not see a, a bodybuilding friend in 20 years. When you see him, it's just like you just saw him yesterday. Well, in any case, my friends, I'm not going to get into how many curls and sets and reps. I'm so sick of that. Everybody knows the same old stuff. I want you to think. When you click Leroy Cobra on, Leroy Cobra is not only going to tell you about bodybuilding. It's going to tell you his perspective. 
and how open he is and how he wants to help you to think. To be content. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Before you click away, I want you to subscribe, like, comment, hell, even dislike if you want to. At least do something before you get out of here.